Can you do? Hi. In this demo, there was a very noisy class in the background, so I'm going to try to narrate everything that I was doing over top. The first thing I'm doing is selecting a bat. Bats should be stored on their sides and not flat, or they can become warped. There are also methods of attaching the bat to the wheel below so that it doesn't slip. I didn't use any of these. I just stick it on there for the purpose of the demo. Whip up a pot, set on the rack. It could be discussed. It could be discussed. I'm lining up the two little pins on the wheel with the holes on the bat and making sure that everything is fit well. You can kind of see the middle of the bat, and that gives you a good idea of how to center your clay and where to put it on there. You also want to make sure that area is clean and dry. If it's not, you might not get your clay to stick when you're ready to throw. I'm getting my clay ball ready to put on the wheel. You want it to be really perfectly round because that helps you a lot with centering later. There are also ways to wedge clay so that a certain part of it winds up being down on the bat, and that's a more sophisticated way of making sure your clay is ready for throwing. I also have a, a mirror right across from me so I can see the different shapes that I'm making. That helps me. My hands are dry, and I'm close up to the wheel, almost leaning over top of it with my upper body. You can't be too far away or you won't be like aligned properly at the top of the clay. I also want to get a little bit. It's really important you have a well wedged piece of clay. If there's any lumps in it at all, you'll be able to feel them in your fingers and they'll throw your clay from being off center. I'm going to put it right down in the middle, just sort of visually aligning it. I'm going to turn on the wheel to a very low speed and tap it. That helps me to kind of get a volcano shape out of my clay and gets it ready to be centered. I don't move my hands around. I let the turning of the wheel make sure that the object is centered. As I'm patting the clay, I'm watching in the mirror to see that I have a uniform volcano shape on all the sides. And I don't quite yet, but I'll keep tapping it until it looks, looks just like it has the right angle, exactly the same on both sides. Now I'm going to turn the wheel off and measure the distance to the edge of it from my clay. Those distances should, should be all be the same, but a little bit extra on that side. So I'm going to try and squish the clay over a little bit so that it's really, truly centered. That saves me a lot of trouble later. Once I'm ready, I'm going to start my wheel full of bore, and I'm going to um, start pushing on my clay. So if I push forward first, the clay could scoot off like I just gestured there a minute ago. So my first pressure is actually going to be down. Whoa, there was something going on with the wheel there I had to fix. So Simon described it as a malfunction. Okay, you turn the wheel on full speed. That's the way to center because you have the most power. And centrifugal force is good for you. My first pressure is going to be down with the outside pad of my right hand. And once I know it's firmly on the bat, then I'm going to start pushing with my left hand with the palm pushing away from me. You can see it wobbling there. That's, that's what clay looks like when it's not centered. If you are wondering how you'll know when it's centered, you'll know because it won't do that. It'll look perfectly even and you won't have to ask. Your elbows are in your hips, so they make a triangle that's a lot more stable. If you're like this, you'd be like all over the place. Centering the clay is the most important part. Um, it's difficult to do with a large piece because you really have to wrestle it sort of to keep it centered. I'm coming down with my right hand, and my left hand, once I'm sure it's on, is going to start pushing toward the mirror. Look how far over the clay I am. My face is directly over it, if not even a little farther. My chest is over it. You've got to have your body weight pushing down like that. Now, did you see how the clay stopped wobbling around? That's, that tells you that you're pushing worked and that it's beginning to center. Now the next step is to cone up and there are a couple ways to do this. Um, I use it with my thumb and the other thumb squishing the sponge to get pressure on the sponge and to keep getting my hands wet. Mrs. Yurig teaches that you put a sponge in your right hand and you can cone up doing that as well. This aligns all the platelets and centers the clay in the middle of the chunk. It's got a nice volcano shape. I don't want a little dimple or a lake on top. I want it nice and rounded. And once you've done that, that helps center the clay and now you're ready to go back down to chop it back down. Pushing first with my right hand and then gradually pushing up with my left with the heel of my hand pushing straight up toward the mirror. A minute ago, I was also pointing to the side of my volcano, and I was actually pointing out what looks like sort of a swirl in an ice cream cone that's been at soft serve. 
and that's not a good thing. That means that my hands moved too fast for the clay to rotate completely around, and you get sort of a soft serve swirl in there, and that's not good. Um, that means that your pressure was not even. Like that one, I could turn it a couple more times. We got that giant hard lump at the middle somewhere else, you know what I mean? But ah, but I, I was too, I was too much for her, so. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, when I look at this in the mirror, I can see my walls are like, and they really should be flat. So, <laughs> how long will this take? 15 minutes. Oh. Always get the excess around the outside edge just because it's really annoying. Now I'm ready to put my center in. So, however low my hands go, that's the depth of the pot. I want to get down to about a half an inch from the bat. This certain thing is the bat. Is about uh. I have one really nice bat that the Kepner guys bought me that's plastic, but the rest are all homemade, kind of garbage, hard to work. Where's the good one? Once I have the center pushed down and to be the depth of my I pot, I take my fingers off really gently. Watch that pot. See how it sent a shock wave across it? When you touch your pot, it's the same thing. If you go really quickly, it's going to send a shock wave across your pot, and that could make it come off balance. Same thing if you take your hands off that little dish of water. A shock wave went across. Same thing on your pot. It's always gentle and slow on and gentle and slow off so that you don't throw it off balance. Now I'm testing the depth of the bottom of my pot. When you're beginning, it's nice to know exactly how thick you have that. I have the wheel stop and I use the pin tool and mark it with my finger. You'd think it'd be bad that I just put a hole in the bottom of my pot, but actually now my finger going back and forth across it really slow will heal it. If present that your fingers are on a clock, like you're going from the middle of a clock over to three o'clock and then back again really slowly, and the heel, the hole heals itself. I don't know why, but it does, and you need to do that. It also aligns the platelets in the bottom of the pot. And now I'm ready to pull out the, the bottom of the pot. However far I bring out the bottom of the pot, that's how big the pot's bottom will be. I need to drag it directly toward me. If I angle it up, then my pot will flare out. If I angle it down, then the pot will get thinner towards its outside edge. I need to bring it exactly toward me, straight towards my stomach in a nice direct fashion. There are lots of ways to do this. You can do a crab claw kind of motion. You can also use the sponge on the inside and drag it out towards you. Um, notice I'm using the sponge as a pump and adding water whenever I feel like the, my fingers are getting kind of gritty. If I go down, I'll get too close to the bat. If I go like this, I'll flatten it out. Like You have to really be careful about how you bring it out. I don't know how much more I should do this. No, it's red. Dragon. All right, once you have it as wide as you want it, now you have to align the platelets in the base of the pot. So get all the water out of there. Constantly putting water in, taking it out, because if it lays in there, it'll ruin your pot. So again, from the center of the clock out to like three o'clock, and I just do that a couple of times and that aligns the platelets in the bottom of your Play. If you ever pick up a piece of pottery and it has an S crack on it, it's because the pottery didn't do this. Hi, I think I'm going to do the candy cane lane tonight. Hey, Cole. I don't know, maybe I need to come back. Cole told me we're going to candy cane lane tonight. <laughs> Once you have the base as wide as you'd like it, it's time to start pulling up the side. And you can do this in a couple of ways. Right there, I'm using an H kind of grip to make sure my top around the pot is even. But I need to pull up the sides and get all that thickness of clay straight up. I can do it a couple of ways. Um, Again, notice how I'm really leaning over that pot. There's a couple of ways I can do this, like I said. In the first way, you can have your sponge sort of driving along the bat like a car, and then when it comes to the pot, it's going to go up. Your inside hand is always a little bit lower than your outside hand. Another way is just to use the fingertips of both hands, but my fingertips don't always press evenly, and you get the ice cream cone effect sometimes. So to solve that, I just use like my front knuckle, and I go up like that. You have to just experiment and see what works best with you. Again, I'm using the sponge like a pump to keep my fingers wet as I circulate, as the pot circulates underneath them. Notice I'm going really slow. The pot has to rotate at least one entire distance around before you move it up to the next height. And I'm gradually pulling up, pulling up. You can see a little ridge in the clay. That should be where my upper fingers on the inside are a little bit higher than the fingers on the outside. Notice how carefully and gently I went off the edge there. And the higher the walls go, that's time to get your speed slower. 
Now it's a good time to take a look in the mirror again. And I can see from here that in the mirror it will show that my pot kind of has a waste. And I have way too much clay down there. And I've got to get that up. So that'll be my next job with a second pool. You really don't want a huge amount of clay at the bottom of your pot. You've got to keep bringing that up the side. But notice how I'm pulling straight up so it makes a cylinder. I'm not trying to widen the pot out yet at this point. Hey, Mr. Bundman's not our coach. Really? It's Coach Charles. He retired last year. Gently and easily take your fingers off. I'm just getting all the moisture out of the inside. I'm getting the moisture off of the bat, so visually it's a little more calming and normal to look at, and also just gives me a chance to see where I'm at with my pot. That's that's really not bad. I'm not really interested in going a whole lot with that. It's like a little nod. See a little nod that. Yeah, it's just it's just the calm of play. Like when I do the final spray. Morgan was concerned about a little like blob of clay at the top. When you get your excess clay off the outside, they'll take care of it. Now see right there, I'm pointing. There's like a little blob, and you really don't want that. You want to get your wall as smooth as possible. You don't want thick and thin areas from pooling too hard or too too less, too much, too little at some point. So I'm gonna use my rib and go up the side with the rib. I've got the sponge on the inside and the rib on the outside. And lots of times that'll take care of it. I can, I can tell you from here, I'm really happy with the thickness of the walls. It's a nice thin pot. Now, do you see it start to wobble there? It's because I'm knocking it off center just a little bit. I gotta be careful before I wreck this whole thing. There, now it looks stable again, you can see. You can't be too afraid. Um, clay will usually recover. And again, I'm getting the water out of the inside and the outside, keeping it as dry as possible while I throw so that the water doesn't destroy it. Now I'm gonna take some of the water off the outside. You gotta get that excess water off of there so that it doesn't become a sloppy mess and it'll dry better for you. So I'm just gonna take the metal rib at this point, kind of at an angle, 45 degree angle, and gently drag it up the side to get that extra slurry off the outside. Again, I'm going really slow. And by this time, my wheel is not going full speed. By now, I'm down to half speed. So I gotta go even slower to accommodate each rotation before I move the rib up higher. Okay. Are you ready to wire off? So wiring off is how you get your pot off. Get your thumbs, push them down really hard, and your wheel is rotating just slightly underneath it, pulling directly back towards you to get as close to the bat as you can with that wire. Some people come right off after that. They uh, literally take cans on both sides, and they rip the pot off, and they have no problem with it, just like that. Every time I do it, it gets all smooshed, so I just let it dry on the bat like that overnight, and I'll come in tomorrow and rewire it off again, and then I'll be able to trim up the bottom. That's your next step, is trimming. You have a nice pot. Good night.